And I tell you why. I was walking on a street one day and a young man was telling somebody, you have to watch Miss Martin, you know, this is a labor right place, no man a pain pay. <laughs> he didn't see me walking up. So I came up behind him. He said, you know what? Every time you see her in a, in a city business, she talk about, you know, the first man that used that word is PG. <laughs> no, that is a dangerous thing because what is in a city? So I went up to him and I stood there, and when he turned around and saw me, he froze. And the man said, boy, Miss Mandy, you have to explain yourself. I said, I say it only means in the city. That means right which by your liver, so that's all it means. <laughs> and the other guy said, go on, do man this, your man, you know no sense. <laughs> so, simple things create great misunderstanding for inner city youth. And it, because the value is different, when a young lady comes to my office to speak to me or a young man, I have to interpret half the time I'm not understanding. When a young lady says to me, a young man is trying to swipe her, I think about cards, I think about <laughs> knives. You understand me? I think about everything else. Now you know this is not my generation. So no. I have to get out my pen, write my paper, and says, explain. I said to the young man, why are you pulling a knife on this young lady? He says, he look at the young lady, young lady look at him. I say, is it your lunch card he's trying to steal the money from? They look at each other and laugh. She said, no, miss. Him say, I want to have sex with me. I say, Lord, have mercy. Here we go again. So we get everything. Words of different meaning. A young man came, he said, I'm coming from prison. He says, I got 12 years for stabbing up a man. I said, what do you mean by that? So what could you have done? He said, the man kick over me Goshen and me pots. I said, Lord. I said, explain, what is Goshen? He said, you know, like a mix of soup. When you pour, you put everything together. We call it Goshen or we call it pots. No, I've never heard of those two words. So I said, those are words for you. So when you broke, you know what you're making? Go shank and pots. <laughs> so if you watch TV and you see our recessionary meals on Grace Kitchen, you'll see that our poverty is about creativity. This violence cuts deep. I mean, when you see up the road, father fine shot against son, son fine shot and father, nephew shooting uncle, eh? cousin shooting mother, it is crazy. The need for more employment opportunities for the youth, and I'm not saying that we must get up now and start saying, yes, let's create employment opportunities. We need to encourage our youth to think creatively and to see how they can come up with new ways of occupying their time economically so they can get some money. When somebody's doing it at a level in the community, all of us, we need to stop looking down. At Grace, we buy from the community. The community is not only our customer, they are our suppliers. When our 50 stew peas come on a Wednesday, Mr. Moss, you can attest to the taste of the stew peas. With a whole lot of pig's tail. You know, they go very fast. So if somebody can cook, he brings the lunch and we supply. The cooks supply our homework center with lunches on a Saturday and on a Sunday. So, and let me tell you something, big as grace is, it's trust, we trust the food, you know. So, when the community come down with their bill, and when a little guy come to the shop and give him trouble, the man say, you know if you take my food, for grace, trust from me. <laughs> so, you see what I mean? It's a whole lot of status that. It gives the community that feeling that somebody is caring. When somebody in the community feels sick, believe you, Mrs. Madden is the doctor. We have all sorts of things. We have young men coming in to say, Miss Madney can buy me some Viagra. He a thousand. I say, what? <laughs> Listen, the things that come to us are not easy. They are not easy. A young man passed one day. 
He said he needed to show me something which was happening to him. And I saw him fudging and fudging. I said, what are you looking for? He says, I'm trying to pull my zip. I said, no. Come here. I said, no, come here. You need to go to the doctor. It's not about pulling zip in here. So we have it. It is here all the time. And even when the work sometimes is hard, it is hard. Believe you me, those are the moments. Mr. Sweeney is blind. And when they come to his desk and somebody say, what do you have in your cup, boss? He said, two pen. They say, what a liar, man. The man can see. Why am I going to bathroom? So, you know, we laugh about those things. And sometimes we cry when we hear about the tragedies because they are not easy. When our student of 16 is shot and killed in the night in a corner, our heart ache. She has not even completed fifth form. And we have more students like that. Due to the high unemployment within the communities, it is difficult for students to aspire to attend university or to find guarantors for student loans. That's a big issue. No guarantors, but what? You would ask, so how you get all your tertiary people at university? Because we work smart. So what we do, we allow our students to apply for their student loan regardless of whether they have a guarantor and then they start. So they're on the early bird program and then they go out to seek guarantors. So it is there that you try. But the university says you have to have a commitment that somebody is going to pay your fee. But what? They also accept the receipt that the student loan gives to say that you have applied. So when you get accepted, then we start work on how you're going to stay there. Because the important thing is to get you into that institution. The paranoia among the youth is still very high and is a barrier to them getting access to employment outside of the community as they always feel threatened. A young man was asked to wash some car in the car park. He came to say he's not coming back. I said, why are you not coming back? He said, the man, they are pre me. Me so you mean they are pre you? He said, from last week, me see a man walk up and down past the place. He are pre me. And right away, he's nervous. He thinks somebody's going to kill him. So, because we had the task team, we called the man who was walking up and down and say, why are you passing the man and preening him? He said, no, my auntie begged me for go to Matal and go pick up a housing farm. Had nothing to do with premium, nothing to do with violence, but his paranoia that thinks that says if I leave my community, I am going to die. So when they come out for a job, they don't hold the job once there's violence because they feel that somebody will kill them, whether they have a mark, whether they, they have no face. PNP and labor rights, somebody say, me just kill a PNP, me just kill a labor right. It takes away that individuality, that things that says that you're a human with children. We need to stop it. We need to remove those things from our communities. Some of our youths, they take no talk. In communities, say, me not take chat. So whether you are done, you can't chat to me. If you are parents, you can't chat to me. They don't take talk. And as a result, they do not see any proposal for change as applying to them. And so they are not willing to buy into the change process. It doesn't mean that you're going to turn your back. We just have to find a different way to work with those youths. Early sexual engagement is a major challenge within the community. As a result of the high levels of violence, young men feel it necessary to impregnate young girls to leave something of themselves behind if they should die. This fatalistic outlook underpins the lack of hope and anticipation of an early death. We hear about it every day. Five people killed, 15, 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 13-year-olds, which is part of everyday life. 
Females serve as a vessel to carry on the name of these young men, and in some cases, this action is supported by parents. I mean, we have gone, I've gone to a community, and I heard I was sitting on a corner because I don't really look like this when I go to work, you know. I really look like the work. So <laughs> while we're on the corner, <laughs> while we're on the corner, the girl says, same day, same day. So I am looking to see what is happening, and she says, she turned to the other girl and said, the other girl said, the other girl, the man, we are pine pan him for? She said, go on, me go take him name. So I'm trying to work out what she mean by taking name. Meaning she want to have a baby for this guy because he's handsome. Not because he has a job or he can mind a baby. It's about being handsome, good looking, and our baby got pretty and have long hair. Isn't that a serious thing? <laughs> 